All right, guys, I think we're live. I'm going to do a little show here. Uh, it's been snowing. It's uh, melting off now, but it is, like, really cold to where, like, I can feel the cold coming, you know, off the window out here and stuff. So, I'm going to get up and do a live stream this morning and then uh, get on with my day, I guess. Uh, give a chance for a few people to get here. So, but anyway, um, basically the... Hey, Tim Merritt is out there. What's going on, Tim? Good to see you, man. Master Chef. I cooked breakfast this morning, man. I think I should have took a picture. You know, you could have given me some pointers. But anyway, um, yeah, thumbs up this thing, man. Yep, expat is here. Looks like the usual, uh, usual group of suspects are showing up. Living the dream. All right. Okay, guys, so basically about two weeks ago, the library up here, um, I think they do it about twice a year. It's really fantastic. It's a very small town. Uh, one of those towns you can spit from end to end of the town and the library up here will have a huge book sale I mean for as small as that library is the stuff they have blows my mind and it's by donation I've actually gone in there before and got boxes and boxes of books and DVDs and stuff during one of their sales And I got in my pocket and I had two dollars and I was going to get in my wallet and get about a ten dollar bill out And they grabbed the two dollars and said that's good and you can go. They just want rid of the stuff Round up the usual suspects. That's right so anyway, I went in there and I got a bunch of movies and it was really nice. I gave them a $5 bill because I got three or four books and a big stack of movies here. And, uh, you know, um, I could have gave them less, but, you know, over the last three or four years, I've gotten a lot of stuff off of them for cheap and stuff, right? So I figured I'll just go through some of the movies and stuff. And that connection needs to hang in there. All right, guys. So, uh, believe it or not, I do not have a Blu-ray player, nor do I have a flat screen TV. I, it's just not a priority for me and stuff. I've had, I've had it before, uh, but uh, not a thing that I really want. But it amazed me that I got this whole stack and, like I said, three or four actual books and stuff. Hey, what's up? Everybody's showing up. Gambit 96 is out here. Awesome. So, I got a big stack of movies here that I'll just kind of show off and then... Usually what happens with these live streams is everybody wants to start talking about comics and stuff, which is not a problem. So I'll be taking questions. So uh, tweet it out. There's a live stream. Get some people here and stuff. Uh, now that we're getting into spring and closer to summer for you people that aren't getting the snow and stuff, uh, uh, I don't expect a lot of people to be here. Yes, so and Neil, we have movies. We have movies. Tag on, man. This is awesome. Everybody's popping in here, right? So anyway, like I said, uh, for Owen Neal, since I was out here, I got a couple of actual books and uh, at a library sale and a big stack of uh, movies uh, for like about five bucks and stuff, right? So I was talking about Blu-ray. I'm, I'm going to have to come around and start doing the Blu-ray sooner or later. Man, I end up with a big... Uh, I've owned a TV. I haven't owned a TV since 2014. I literally live the Jack Reacher lifestyle, minus the fighting. Um... I haven't had like satellite or cable or anything since about 2008 and I, I really don't miss it. When I end up in my friend's house, a family member's house or in a hotel, I uh, start, you know, flipping through the TV channels and stuff. There's really nothing I'm missing. There's nothing to justify the prices for me of satellite, cable, whatever you got out there. Anyway, but I'm going to have to come back around to Blu-ray, man. I've actually got a small, not a small, but I've ended up with a, quite a collection of Blu-rays. Cable is obsolete, yeah. But anyway... I could not pass this up. Um, what I have here is, uh, I talked about this a few weeks ago, uh, An American Werewolf in London, one of my all-time favorite movies. Is it a comedy? Is it a horror? Is it a drama? Or is it all of above? Uh, John Landis directed this. Uh, this was just fantastic. And whenever I used to watch Thriller, uh, the Michael Jackson video back in the day and stuff, my mind went right back to this. <laughs> People are hooked on cable. That's funny. So yeah, I had to get this on Blu-ray. I have it on VHS, I think. I definitely have it on DVD. So I had to grab this for, you know, what it was nothing. Uh, what's cool about this small town is that this stuff is all in good quality. Uh, you don't have to worry about going in there and stuff because these really don't, the reason these are on sale is they don't get checked out. So they're like barely watched and stuff, right? And then I got this. There's a lot of, oh man, what was it? Firefly? That Firefly show? I actually had it on DVD, the entire set. I found it for a dollar, brand new, at a flea market about two years ago. Couldn't get into it. A lot of people love this show and stuff, but uh, years ago I ran across the DVD of Serenity. My son loved it. I can never get through it. It's just really amazing. This is one of the few sci-fi things that I just cannot get into. Uh, but it was there, so I got it. I was going to give this another chance. So I have Serenity on uh, 
Blu-ray. Uh, I don't know if there's any, it was it Firefly? That was the show, right? I'm going to assume. Now this one right here, um, I'm actually watching downstairs. I quit about halfway through just to kind of get out there and do this. I like the song Werewolves of London. Can't remember the singer's name. Um, Warren Zevon. Werewolves of London was by Dumbo Warren Zevon. I think that was his name. Uh, you know, little, you know, I like the guy sitting in a Chinese restaurant looking at the menu. So anyway, oh, lost a viewer, man. Somebody not like Warren Zevon. Sorry, man. Anyway, uh, Secret Window here. I uh, love this movie. I think this was based on a Stephen King book or something, The Secret Garden. But uh, I like these, um, I like these, quir I, li I like the Johnny Depp where he did quirky characters that didn't go off the deep end. You know what I mean? Uh, Ninth Gate. I love the Ninth Gate by Johnny Depp in it. Uh, Secret Window. This is just a really cool, uh, yeah, popcorn flick. You know, it's really cool. Basically, uh, there's a guy named Shooter shows up at uh, this author's log cabin. The author's going through a divorce and all this stuff. Tells him that he plagiarized him and starts kind of terrorizing him. But it's still, you can tell there's going to be a twist coming, right? And uh, Johnny Depp usually takes, the, the trick with Johnny Depp is that you have a little fun trying to figure out his uh, roles that he's doing. Because from what I've listened to him before, he'll, he'll take characters from two different movies or something. Or two different actors or anything like that and mix them up. You know, yeah, John Turturro is talented. Yeah, yeah, uh, Big Lebowski, Secret Window, and uh, Barton Fink. If you've not seen John Turturro in Barton Fink, you are, I'd do a whole freaking video on Barton Fink. Uh, that's by the Coen brothers, the guys that did Big Lebowski. You know, that's their, their big one. Um, but yeah, uh, John Turturro and Barton Fink is just a fantastic, underrated movie. John Goodman's best performance ever, I think, is in that movie. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I like how we went from Johnny Depp, Stephen King in uh, Secret Window and we ended up in the Coen Brothers' Barton Fink, a movie nobody's heard of. Go look up the trailer. It's a really good movie. Yeah, somebody, we got somebody out there who knows Barton Fink. Now this movie, I'm kind of glad it never really got big. This is a cult favorite, okay? And, uh, and that's just fine with me, man. Is this Joe Dante? Nope. Yeah, actually, I don't know anybody here that did the movie, but, you know, Tom Hanks and uh, Meg Ryan, I think this is like 1990 or 91 or something, and this is way before Sleepless in Seattle and all the big movies they ran or whatever it was. You got mail and all this stuff, but Meg Ryan plays like three or four different characters in here, and uh, Tom Hanks plays this guy that has a shit job, and he gets told he has a brain cloud, and all of a sudden he like changes his life and, and uh, starts living life a little bit, and it's just it's just a fantastic funny movie uh i mean i really enjoy this one when i saw this i just had to grab it now again i think i still have this on vhs everything by the coen brothers except the last one they made with uh, oscar isaacs was that the one that like took place in hollywood where some movie star it was it was like in the 40s and the oh uh, yes yeah and uh thanks tim appreciate it man but uh wasn't the one where like i don't know some movie star was kidnapped and they couldn't finish a movie. I don't know. I tried to watch it. Um, and then this one right here is Stephen King. Now, it really blows my mind because, like, the problem with watching a Tom Cruise movie is that I always felt like it's Tom Cruise and he kind of plays the same character all the time. I don't know. But uh, Stephen King came out here and, uh, oh, I can't believe, believe I'm forgetting the guy's name. Philip K. Dick. This is a Philip K. Dick story. No, it was like the Bob Dylan era of folk singers. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that 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 movie. I know what you're talking about. That movie was so obtuse, and oh, I can just think of nothing but negatives for it. Yeah. So, but uh, Tom Cruise comes out here, and Steven Spielberg gets together, and they do a Philip K. Dick story. Now, I'm down for Philip K. Dick movies. You know, from Blade Runner to this uh, Scanner Darkly. I finally got around to watch that. And there's, a, there's actually two or three movies out there that you just don't realize are Philip K. Dick movies. They're, they're worth kind of looking up and stuff, man. But Minority Report, Tom Cruise, for me, uh, it seems like he always put... I, I enjoy his sci-fi movies. Uh, what was it? Edge of Tomorrow and uh, the one where they were all clones. And uh, I don't know. But anyway, he's had a couple of really good... Um, out of, you know, it starts with an O. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm blank. But anyway, I like when uh, Tom Cruise, uh, apparently he, he does some really good sci-fi movies. Hudsucker Proxy was really good. Uh, Brother War Art Thou. Uh, I, I didn't get into that one. That one, I live in the mountains and I just don't like bluegrass. 
Oblivion, that's it. Thank you, Tim. Oblivion. So you got Oblivion, Edge of Tomorrow, and then Minority Report, which I think are all fantastic movies and stuff, right? And I know there was people people getting sick of Tom Cruise there for a while. I don't I don't care about anything he does in his personal life. Uh, I just like it when uh, you know he kind of makes a, a really good movie. But Minority Report is really movie. It's like borderline. It, it, to me, for some reason, it, it gave me a borderline Stanley Kubrick feel, which isn't fair because it's nothing like a Stanley Kubrick film. Gives you that same thing, but basically they have uh, three people who can see into the future that they keep in a gigantic petri dish with uh, you know wires coming out of their brain, and they predict uh, crimes, and they will come and arrest you for crimes you didn't commit, but you were going to. And then all of a sudden they find out that he, Tom Cruise, is one of those cops that's going to create a crime. Yeah. All right. Now the next one. I love my monkeys in movies. Yeah. You see this guy here and all that stuff. I mean, I, I don't remember not watching Planet of the Apes. Inside Loon Davis. Yeah, terrible movie. That It was so bad. Oh, man. I mean, it was just, you know, either in a movie, you either, yeah, I mean, he has a new one called Only the Brave. Okay, I might check that one out. But I like the movies where there's an, you know, either you're the underdog or you're not likable. And then we find out why the character's not likable. And all of a sudden you know, we end up liking him and stuff like that. And the character in that, that Cohen movies we were talking about, there was nothing likable about him. I was just like, oh my God, he was just, has like a weird sense of entitlement and stuff, right? But anyway, my monkey movies, this is finishes the trilogy, the, the trilogy of prequels to the 1968 uh, Planet of the Apes with Charleston Heston. And it's its 50th anniversary this year and stuff. But these movies were fantastic. I rooted for everyone to be killed off. <laughs> Comic fan is here. All right, guys. We're just talking some movies. People are rolling in now. So, you know, we had Rise of the Planet, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, whatever. And then we finally got War of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, and Lewin Davis was pretentious inside Lewin Davis. I hated that movie. But anyway, the, so the trilogy finished up here to the prequel. And I love these movies. These movies are so freaking underrated with, uh, uh, you know, I mean, they, they were hits in the theater and people enjoyed them and stuff, but uh, I now have like the entire set of this, right? And I don't I don't know if anybody's seen this movie, I don't want to ruin it, but I thought there was some kind of poetic justice in this. Um, there's a lot of e Easter eggs in here where you can see how the apes of, uh, you know, the Charlton Heston movie, you kind of, you, you can see how their culture kind of developed from these movies and stuff, right? And the first movie and some of these movies actually pull from the scrolls of the apes in the 60s, you know, so I mean, it's just fantastic, man, but the poetic justice of this is that, like, it, the, the title is really misleading, War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I like how it's more like the apes end up inheriting the earth, like, well, as people, we did it ourselves. Sleepy Reader's here, all right. Expect Two's here, say, what's up, Sleepy? Just talking some movies. So, uh, Woody Harrelson uh, just always seems to nail any movie he gets. He, he's turning into have one of those little charmed lives. He's starting to have, like, a little... Sam Jackson uh, career there where he's popping up in all these big franchises with big and smaller minor characters and stuff. And for him to be the age that he is, to be the uh, evil general in this movie and stuff, he just freaking nailed it. Yeah, this is part three. You know, you had, I think it was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and then War of the Planet of the Apes. And then you pick up with the Charlton Heston movie. Okay, the first movie, there's all kinds of little Easter eggs towards the end of it. This one... You kind of find out where the apes in the other movie kind of get the idea for their uniform and things like that. Uh, it, it solves more of the mystery, but like I said, it, it, I like how the apes end up sort of um, inheriting the earth, let's just say that. It's still really, you know, got a lot of social commentary in there, right? Now, don't, don't leave. Don't leave when I show you this movie. Don't leave, right? Superman versus Batman, Dawn of Justice. I downloaded the, that on Torrent, but couldn't get a copy with subtitles. With no subtitles, that movie sucked for me. Okay. <laughs> um, so we have uh, Superman versus Batman. Now, this is really odd. I was looking forward to this movie. I went to the theater, not with great expectations. You need subtitles to know what the apes are saying. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they use sign language and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, with the Superman and Batman movie, you know, and I was sitting there and I was like, it had like a cool scene here and a cool scene there. And then, of course, they have to retell the origin of Batman in it. And there's just so many problems with this movie. I was actually sort of on board with like, okay, maybe it'll get better is what I was thinking, right? Then a strange thing happened. 
I was uh, traveling for work, ended up in a hotel room. I think I was on the phone with the girl I was dating at the time or something. I can't remember. I don't know. But anyway, I ended up having the TV on and just for noise, and this plane was playing. Oh, Paul, uh, Paulo's here. Nice. Okay, go go sub Paulo too, guys. Paulo Costas. Uh, so, um, Costa. But uh, so I'm sitting here, and for some reason, the second time around, this movie was better. And I'm just sitting there like, what's happening? You know, I mean, I was really kind of in shock. Uh, but the best thing about this movie is when Wonder Woman pops up, she freaking steals every scene she is in. Okay, that's how I knew the next, uh, the, the Wonder Woman movie was going to be fantastic. Uh, Zack Snyder is far ahead of his time, consider him a genius. Uh, you, <laughs> do you think this is the best superhero movie of all time? I, okay, expect. I'm just, I'm not buying it, man. Sorry. <laughs> All right, but uh, going the second time around, man, this was a much better watch. Maybe there were a few other scenes in here or something that I've seen on TV or I don't know. I don't know, but the hotel had HBO, and I know that's what I was watching it on. So I went ahead and got this because it was free. Batman vs. Superman. I saw the midnight show when it came out. It was enjoyable, enjoyable upon seeing it initially, but on reflection afterwards, it tries too much to do in one film. Yeah, I can go for that. I mean, it, it turns out it's kind of like a fan. Uh, uh, it's a fun movie. But considering this was this should have been a blockbuster and you got two icons, you know, going at it and it's supposed to jump off a franchise and stuff like that. Um, uh, I think there was just, uh, the movie is what it is. It wasn't what it should have been. That's how I feel about it. But uh, I'm glad I can get to the point when I watch it. Okay. All right. So now I don't know if you guys are into horror. I don't know if you guys are into Rob Zombie movies. I personally love them. I know... I love watching his movies because I know that he's fascinated by the 70s and I can actually kind of remember some of the 70s and those movies um, and things like that and the feel of the 70s and everything. And uh, turns around, he turns around and we have a movie that I think he funded this. This might be the movie he funded on Kickstarter. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this movie had some wild funding to it. I don't think it had a wide release and stuff, but I was all for it, but it's 31 uh, and this is just a fun horror movie pulling from the 70s and stuff like that. It's got E.G. Daly and, uh, oh, some other people in here. Jeff Dane. Was Jeff Dane? No. But anyway, this is just a fun, gory movie. A uh, bunch of uh, carnival workers end up getting kidnapped. And a bunch of rich, high society people like with Michael, Malcolm McDowell are all placing bets who are, who's going to win. Kind of think Running Man with horror. I'm sure you'll agree with me, Tim, that the ultimate cut of Watchmen is Zack Snyder's greatest achievement in terms of comic book adaptations. Yes, it is. Um, I actually have it over here. I had to hide it from myself. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because I was watching it over and over. Um, I, I think it was a success. The ultimate cut of the Watchmen is the closest thing you could have done with the Watchmen going from the comic book genre to the movie genre considering that Watchmen was designed to show you everything you can do in comic books that you can't do anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, the movie, was that a Rob Zombie movie? Going, comic fan is asking of 31. Yeah, this is a Rob Zombie movie, uh, and that's fantastic. Seriously, think Running Man with horror. That's what it reminds me of, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Running Man, which I also think was, uh, oh, well, that was a, well, anyway, going all over the place now. Running Man was based on a short story by Stephen King, I think. I love Robin Zobby as a director. Very creative. Yeah, I think uh, he's had probably like one movie I, I couldn't sit through. But anyway, 31 is, is awesome. Fantastic. Uh, now, when it comes to that Watchmen, uh, the ultimate cut is the way to go on that. Okay, uh, the, the version I saw in the theater actually kind of made me angry. And I ended up sitting outside of the theater with a bunch of my friends. And we were trying to find the other things uh, that were good in the movie that they got right. And, of course, it was Dr. Manhattan. When I got to watch the ultimate cut, I was like, here we are with it. I can watch that movie back to back and it's three hours long. I love the haunted world of El Super Bisto. Well, right here, the shells that collapsed. I thought Rob Zombie was a musician. He is. He is. He's an artist, musician. This is the same Rob Zombie that was with White Zombie and all that stuff. He writes the songs. He's into movies. Uh, Rob Zombie does a lot of stuff. But down here... I've taken the shelves that collapsed and I was able to piece together uh, the bottom half that sort of stayed together. I just had to reinforce them. I have all my money movies here. I have the uh, El Super Bisto cartoon. Excuse me. Man, I'm digging this, man. You guys are all just giving me some good topics. 
But El Super Visto, um, I like it, but I don't love it. It's like I watched it, and I'm like, hey, I did that. I also put Watchmen on repeat for many hours. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. The, the Watchmen movie is just fantastic. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that uh, it came and went and didn't really get mined and exploited. I got some merchandise from it that came out with the movie and stuff, right? Now, this next movie, this was a dream come true for me. And this was the only, this is one of the few movies where I actually had anxiety wondering if I was going to get to see it uh, in the theater and stuff, right? Um, it was the Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. No Bigfoot. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> Owen Neal loves his Bigfoot. Owen Neal is somebody you need to go sub. Uh, and I hope I know it's still up, man, because like I, I every couple months I'll go back and watch it. But O'Neill and his buddy Jake did this great, I think it was a three or four part um, uh, musical on YouTube, uh, Bigfoot the Musical. And it's fantastic. I love it. Go watch it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm plugging you, O'Neill. Sorry, man. But uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. They take this island, Earth, and you're in the theater watching them watch a movie and stuff, right? And uh, where this was in the theater... You know, you get to see the, uh, oh man, Satellite of Love. You get to see a few other things in there that you don't get to see on TV. Uh, and then some of the jokes get to be uh, a little bit more adult-oriented here and there where, you know, they're not on television and stuff, man. But this is so good. I, I love this. Um, and, and, the, and the movie they picked, This Island Earth, it was blowing my mind to see This Island Earth on the big screen, even with them, uh, you, know, you know, roasting it and stuff, right? But, um... I, I can watch This Island Earth either with or without them. Um, I like the movie. Jeffrey Dean, Dean Morgan tends to steal the show and everything he's in. Jeffrey Dean Morgan uh, was pulling out of Watchmen because he read the first uh, couple pages of the script and didn't want to be in a movie where he died at the beginning of the movie. His agent had to say, no, 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 you got to, you got to read the rest of it. All right, not exactly a movie, guys. Negan, the comedian, John Winchester... A uh, little Watchmen trivia there before I go on to the next one here and stuff like that. There's an episode of Supernatural, I think was it was either in the fall or it was in the last season. But at the beginning of the show, John and Dean Winchester come in back to their uh, house, whatever, their fort, whatever, from a case. And uh, Dean is sitting there carrying the uh, baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan is Negan, so that's his, you know, they're, they're talking about the baseball bat with barbed wire. But in the show, you know, they're missing their dad. And Dean looks at it and goes, Dad would have loved this. And he sets it down. So they had a little shout-out to Jeffrey Dean Morgan there on the show. Remember him. But anyway, this is Mythbusters. Mega movies myth. Mega movie myth. Now, uh, this was a show that uh, I would catch online. I think the show was on actually towards the, uh, you know, the show was on for a long time. But somehow I would catch this show. Uh, it might have been there towards the end of uh, me getting rid of my satellite and stuff like that. But uh, I always kind of dig these guys. They come up with some really cool stuff. And I can tell that I think it's Adam Savage was a comic book guy because uh, they had a challenge one time to make a hovercraft. And he used a design that I saw in an ad you could order uh, in a comic book like from 1975. He made it from memory. And I'm like, oh, I recognize what you're doing there, right? So this is the movie myth. This is where they take the movies and they try to see if things could happen in real life from action movies and stuff. Uh, Eric Bean, speaking of Supernatural, anyone see the Scooby-Doo episode last week? If you have not ever, even if you don't like Supernatural, even if you've never seen Supernatural, you have to go watch that episode. It was called Scooby Natural. It's an actual episode of Supernatural where they end up in the cartoon. And it is fantastic. It is fantastic. Oh my God, it was so good. Go, go watch it. Look at the clips on YouTube. Uh, you have to go see. You have to watch the episode. It was so fantastic. There's nothing like the meltdown of seeing the Scooby Gang uh, having their nerves break down when they realize they could die. Even though it's a rumor right now, how do you feel about Jeffrey Dean Morgan possibly playing Thomas Wayne, Flashpoint Batman? Well, considering uh, they were setting up for it in uh, Superman vs. Batman. Uh, when they're retelling the origin of Bruce Wayne again, he's already Thomas Wayne in the, in the flashback. And he, it was a Maggie. There's another girl. She was also on Supernatural. Two Supernatural alumni are on Walking Dead. Okay. But it, she played Bella, I think is what it was. But anyway, uh, yeah, two, two actors from Supernatural played Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne. And, uh, 
Jeffrey Dean Morgan was Thomas Wayne in this. I don't remember the scenes. I don't remember that scene was the recent episode, the baseball bat thing. Actually, maybe I do kind of remember that. I don't know. I just caught it. Um, I don't know if it was this season, last season, whatever. Okay, J John Carter. Okay, this was a Disney movie. When I saw the trailer for this, that uh, John, you know, they were doing John Carter, that uh, I was excited. I was like, this is going to be like my Flash Gordon experience when I was a kid. There's going to be a Flashpoint movie. That's an awfully specific story to adapt. Yeah, Paulo, they're, they're, they're making a Flash movie, and they're going back and forth of what they're calling it as Flashpoint. Nobody actually knows what it is. Okay, but um, I, I, they're, they're going back and forth with what it'll be. Um, it, we're at a point now that even if you are a fan of the DC, DC comic book movies, they're a mess right now. It's, it's obvious. you know. But anyway, so I get this movie, and I thought this movie was underwhelming. I, I think I've only made it through watching it one time. Yet my friends, and I have very few friends who are Edgar Rice Burroughs fans, but if they are, I mean, they, they are fans. They loved it. They said it, 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 you know, followed the book really well and stuff. So I'm going to have to give it one more time, you know, one more chance and stuff, right? So got that for free. Excuse me, guys. This uh, hot chocolate is killing me. All right, guys. One Another movie. We've got about two, three more movies here and stuff, right? Wanted. Okay. This was based on, this is by the same guy that did Kick-Ass, you know, one of his books. Um, <laughs> Mark Miller. I love the John Carter movie. It was very fun. I don't understand why people have so disparaging comments about it. It didn't do well here in America, and I heard it did well everywhere else. Um, I don't get it either. I really don't. Uh, it, I'm, like I said, I'm going to give it another chance. I didn't hate the movie, but it just it kind of put me to sleep. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to give it another chance. Uh, with Wanted, Wanted is uh, Mark Miller. Uh, J, was it J.G. Jones or somebody? You know, they did a comic. Um uh, and all of a sudden, Kick-Ass came out. And everybody's grabbing up uh, Miller. Is that his name? I'm, I'm going, I'm talking about, I'm in movies, and apparently I can't get my brain to switch over to comic books at the same time. Oh, excuse me. Let me look here. I got to get this right. I think this came out through Top Cow Comics. Anyway. Yeah. But uh, this one came out, and I finally got to read the actual series of Wanted, the miniseries that this movie was about, super assassins that, you know, have a very zen-like quality to them. And, yeah, thanks, Merritt. I appreciate it, Merritt. And uh, this was just a fantastic, fun movie. Um, I could tell that these, uh, there's a style of this movie, the, cinetop the, the cinetop <laughs> cinematography. Anyway, the style of the movie, I, I, I could almost start picking out other movies that this company had made and stuff, right? But Wanted is one of the few things where they actually improved on the comic book, okay? They made the judgment call to get rid of the superhero stuff that was in the comic book that sort of make me, you know, it made me kind of like slap my face when I was reading the book. They, they go to other dimensions and it's just, if you read the, the actual miniseries and stuff, they picked out the best stuff for the movie, stuck with it, and improved it. This is actually one of the few times that a movie adaptation uh, improved the comic. You know, if you cut the last three pages of dialogue from Wanted and paste it on the last three pages of Civil War, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> I gotta look all that up. Uh, that's funny. I'm gonna make a little mental note of that. Okay. Kick-Ass 2. Um, I love the first Kick-Ass movie. All right, Kick-Ass 2, it's a sequel. It suffers from sequel-itis. You know, it's not going to top the first one and, and things like that. And it's a bit more hit-girl-centric, if you will. And uh, nothing wrong with that, but I think really think it hurt the movie. Uh, fun movie. You either like Kick-Ass or you don't. Good soundtrack, too. The Little Things by Danny Elfman. Nice. Nice. But uh, Kick-Ass 2, if you're a fan of Kick-Ass and all this, you know, this this little mini-verse, mini-world here and stuff like that, uh, this was a good place for it to end. Um, Jim Carrey was in it. It had some, He wanted attention, so he started, like, saying, oh, I'm, I'm against all the uh, violence that was in this movie and things like that. And that's the whole point of this and stuff. Um, but, like I said, this is more of the Hit Girl movie than the Kick-Ass 2 movie, I think. Uh, got a little bit more goofy than it should have. John Wick seemed a lot like Wanted to Me, the mythos. Um, would you believe I've never watched a John Wick and never even heard of John Wick until, they, until the second movie came out on DVD? I never heard of him. Secret Societies. And then here's a movie. Um, apparently I am a John Goodman fan. 
never really realized and stuff, right? 10 Cloverfield Lane, a fantastic movie that um, it's just you sit there and you watch it and you are in the bunker with them. You know, just fantastic, fun little movie with a little twist ending there. You don't know what you... It's a cool movie because you, it's just almost like you have a unreliable narrator. You're right there with the girl, not Shorn. Yeah, John Wick slipped by you too. Yep, yep. Sleepy Reader said it. Just, yeah, he, yeah. I have no idea how I missed that one. But this one, you know, you're you're right there with the character. Uh, this girl here, she was in Scott Pilgrim. Can't believe I'm forgetting all these names. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Anyway. What? Go watch both John Wicks today. Yeah, we're getting some flashback. We're getting some. We're getting some blowback now. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll check out John Wick. I will check out John Wick. But uh, this movie, you're 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 right here with this character where you wake up in the bunker with her and you see you hear sounds and you hear people moving around. You hear things above ground. You're not sure what time of day it is. How long you've been there? Uh, and you're getting the information the same time she is, and you don't know what to believe. You know, that's what's so good about it. That's what's so good about it. You're right there with her trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and it's and it's not heavy. I mean, it's not a heavy movie uh, to where, you know, you really have to invest yourself, man. You can just kind of let go and watch it. This is a really good movie. Um, sure, I've got some other stuff here. I've got some other movies scattered around. Anyway, all that for five bucks. Uh, some of these things I've owned in the past, and I just went ahead and, and uh, replaced them. I have... Um, a Bill Murray movie downstairs that uh, that I replaced, the one where he goes to Japan, uh, Lost in Translation. Uh, that's a pretty good movie. Um, I'm trying to find a movie called that he was in called Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent, which is just his most underrated freaking movie. Nice score. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, nice score. Thanks, man. I was when you said score, and I'm talking about movies. I'm like, is he is he talking about the soundtrack? Yeah, but thanks, man. Yeah, five bucks for all that. And like I said, plus I got a few um, actual books from there that were really cool. Some sci-fi books and stuff, right? All right, guys. So that's with that's it with the movies. Uh, if you guys got any questions about mo anything, like anything, movies, comics, books, whatever, throw them out there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream here in a few minutes and stuff. I appreciate everybody that's showing up. Um, it's kind of cool to have a you know spring Sunday morning and have this many people show up for a live stream. I might do another one later tonight. Um, if you haven't hit that bell down there, hit that bell because I do these sporadically. Speaking of St. Vincent, St. John of Las Vegas is kind of fun. I'll check that out. I've never even heard of that movie. Got to run. Great to hear your movie chat. Yeah, thanks, Sleepy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Steve Buscemi. Yeah, he's always cool. Okay, comic fan just said he saw A Quiet Place. I watched it yesterday. Uh, oh my God, that is an actual film. Um... A Quiet Place, uh, they finally came up with something. I'm not going to say it's 100% original, but for them to shoot a movie with that little dialogue and to rely on the acting, that by the time you get to the ending with it, you kind of catch yourself sort of like, hell yeah, let's all do it. You're ready to jump in with them. Guys, watch Only the Brave. Never seen Only the Bright Brave either. But A Quiet Place, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. I can't believe I saw two good movies in two weekends. Uh, back to back. Um, a Quiet Place. And they're, they're totally opposite movies. Uh, Only the Brave is by the director of Oblivion. I'll check it out. Okay, Josh Brolin's in it. Cool, okay. Uh, but A Quiet Place and Ready Player One. Fantastic movies. Um, I don't really like going to the theater that much. Um... Uh, but to go back to back, uh, I haven't done that in forever, you know, two weekends in a row. Even though it was matinee, don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, two fun movies in a row. Fantastic stuff. And Ready Player One, I was ready to just, it's another, the, the, both those movies, A Quiet Place and Ready Player One, for two different reasons, I was ready to just kind of like turn back around, movie hop, and stay for another showing to watch them back to back. That rarely happens. Oh... All right, guys, uh, sub, share this, hit the bell down there. I might get a lot of questions in there, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, appreciate everybody popping in. Hit the bell, like I said, because I may do another one today. Okay. All right, I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, guys, well, everybody, thanks for hanging out. Oh, here we go. Now we got all kinds of questions. 
Have you seen my friend Dahmer yet? No, but um, I'm wanting to watch that. I want to watch that because uh, there's a thing where I'm from the 90s, you know, so of course I have the fascination with the serial killer um, movies and uh, documentaries and things like that. Um, so it is talking about Jeffrey Dahmer, if I'm remembering right. This is good as the book. Okay. Very cool. All right. Well, I'll definitely be, I have two, three things to check out. All right, guys, thumb it up, subscribe, hit the bell and let your friends know what's going on. Uh, may want to do, may do another one later today, uh, depending on what goes on with my day. And that one might be a bit more comic book centric or movie centric. Uh, what would you guys... I will ask this before I go. Uh, are you guys cool with the movie talk and stuff? Would you want me to do it by genre, pull out some horror movies, or, or just, you know, do it like this, kind of laid back? Because you you're the guys sitting there, you know, popping up, uh, you know, watching this stuff. Because I have a ton of movies. Here's here's some of them. That's a, those are all movies there. Get my thumb out of the way. Yeah, there's this. I have shelves and shelves of movies, and I have some in the bedroom too. Okay, any movie talk is good. I'm cool with the movies, laid back or genres, either way. Cool, cool. All right, guys. I got a bunch of uh, John Hughes movies over there in the floor, and it's not going to show up. Streams rarely go as planned. That's half the fun. There you go. That's what I needed to hear. Because I just, yeah, that's exactly it. All right, guys. Genre by genre is good. Okay, cool, cool. Might pull out some 80s sci-fi or something here. Okay. All right, lady, guys. Haunted World of El Super Bisto. <laughs> E.R. Hughes. E.R. Hughes. I know H.H. H. Hughes. I wonder who E.R. Hughes is. That was by Comic Thing. Okay, guys. All right, I am out of here. Bring it on. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, I might do another movie stream tonight. I'll probably pull out some sci-fi or something there or something. God, ah, gotcha, gotcha, comic fan, gotcha. All right. Later, guys. John Hughes. Yeah, yeah, I'll pull out some John. I can do some John Hughes. I got, a, I got them all on the floor. If you go to my Twitter, I've already posted a picture of all my John Hughes movies. All right, guys, thanks for popping in. Later, guys.